Hello, welcome to lesson 10, exercise one. Now that we've learned how constructors work and what they are, we're going to do this exercise. We'll continue working with the grocery store class. We've been doing in all of these exercises. What I want you to do is copy and paste the code from a previous exercise that defines the class. And then we want to alter the class and add a constructor that will take information on the apples and the oranges and assign those numbers to the instance variables. Okay, so once the constructor is is built and once we've created our object using the constructor we want to call the method that we already have called gross revenue and print the revenue for each store for the year and then we want to call the method apple revenue target with a value of one thousand dollars for each of the three stores and then we want to call the method orange revenue target with a value of eight hundred dollars for each of the three stores so essentially we're these these things that we're doing here these method calls these are the things that we already have written and uh, things that we've already done, uh, but we want to just basically initialize everything with a constructor first. So before we go, go any farther, let's go ahead and run it and just see what happens here. I'm going to hit the run button. What we want to see is something like this. We want to have the ro gross revenue for each store. That's using this, re this method right here. And then we want to print out something along the lines of printing the Apple revenue target. We want to make $1,000 on Apple, so for each store, they're going to need to sell a different quantity of apples. This is because each store charges a different a different amount of money for each apple. And the same thing, thing on oranges. We have a different revenue target for oranges. Each store has to sell a different amount of oranges because everybody's charging a different amount of money for, for the oranges. So how do we proceed? We have our main method here. Let me go ahead and skip down actually. Uh, this is the grocery store class. All right the grocery store class. So we have the variables that we've been using and down below actually, let me skip over this, down below this is the gross revenue method that we've already created. This is the Apple revenue target method that we've created and this is the orange target or orange revenue target method that we have created um, up until this point. What we've added is basically this. This is the only thing that's been added to this uh, to this class. So we're adding a constructor. So the name of the basically a method or the name of the constructor that we have is called grocery store. Notice that it's spelled exactly the same as the class name. So that's how Java knows it's the constructor. So there's nowhere in here where you tell Java, hey, this is a constructor. It just knows that whenever you have a class name and then you create a method inside of it with no return type here, see there's no void or double or anything out here, then it knows that it's a constructor. All right. Now when you create your struggle, your, your constructor, what you have in parentheses to take as arguments, right, basically need to contain the variables that you're trying to initialize. So here we've created an integer, we call it apple sold, double apple price, integer orange sold, double orange price. The names of these variables really don't matter much because all you're doing is you're just assigning your member variables here, like apple sold yearly, you're assigning it to whatever is passed down into this constructor, all right? Apple retail price, the price of the apples in, in the uh, various stores, is just going to take the value of this guy here, which is what I've passed down to the constructor. Orange sold yearly takes the value of what I've passed to the third spot, and orange retail price takes the value of whatever I have um, in the last spot. So the names here that I'm using inside of my constructor here. It doesn't really matter. I could name this A, B, C, and D if I wanted to, but I do need the variable types to match. Apple sold needs to match whatever what I want to assign it to here. Uh, Apple price is a double. It needs to match the, va the type of variable this is up here because ultimately I'm going to set them equal and they, so they have to be of the same type in order to set them, set them equal, equal like that. So that's what the constructor is. You basically go into the class, you create a method name that matches the name of the class, you don't put a return type out front, and then you put arguments in there that are going to correspond to what you're trying to populate. And then inside the body of the method, you just assign these member variables equal to whatever it is is passed along through the, um, through the parameters here. So then you can see how things have changed. Now when we come up to the top here, we, the, we're creating the objects here. This is the the way that we always create objects. So this is the, the name of the object, this is the type, uh, or the class I should say, here's the name of the object, and then we have the new keyword, uh, grocery store. Now in all previous examples we've had just empty parentheses here because we didn't have a, an explicit constructor out there, 
Um, but here we're calling, it's almost like calling a method where, where we kind of are calling the grocery store constructor inside of that class and we're passing these four values for the Houston store. So this is the number of apples sold in a year, this is the price of an apple, this is the number of oranges sold in a year, and this is the price of an orange. And so whenever we create the Houston store object, we call the constructor. So it initializes it, but then we call the constructor. It passes all four of those values into these spots. And then when we get here, those four values get assigned in to my member variables. So this one line here, by passing these arguments into a constructor, really takes the place over here in the previous example, when we created the Houston store before, we had had to do things separately. First of all, we created the Houston store class like this. Notice the parentheses were empty. And then for the, each of the four member variables, we had to assign explicitly all four values. So all of this stuff is kind of eliminated here and we just take care of it by dealing with the constructor. Notice that after we create the Seattle store, we have to have four different entries to assign the variables to the Seattle store. And then we create the Orlando store. Then we have to assign everything to the Orlando store like this. But when we go on using a constructor, we can create the Seattle store object and just pass the values into the constructor. And then the very next line, we create the Orlando store object and pass those four values, apples, apple price, oranges, orange price, into the constructor. Whenever it creates the object, it creates the member variables, and then it goes into the constructor and assigns values into those member variables and then your object is fully initialized. Now step back and take a look at what's going on. We've basically uh, replaced in the previous example all of this stuff, everything highlighted in blue, we basically replaced it with just these three lines. And I personally love code that is easy to read but also compact. If you can make it compact and make it easy to read that's a huge bonus. Since all of these objects are basically initialized with the same type of variables, putting them in parentheses in a constructor makes a lot of sense and saves a lot of space. Also, if you accidentally forget, let me go ahead and run this again and just show you. Let's say I accidentally forget to put a value in here, this 0.87, right? Notice as soon as I take, a, take something out of the constructor here, it all highlights red and it says the constructor is undefined. So if I try to run this, it's not going to work. Well, actually it tells me to save it first. Let me hit save. Let me hit run. Errors exist. So it's, it's just not going to work, right? Because whenever you define the when you define the constructor down here, you're telling Java when you call that constructor, you expect four values. You expect an integer, then a double, then an integer, then a double. And if that's not the case, it's going to point that out for you. So as soon as we are done with that, we go into the next part. Now the rest of the uh, exercise makes total sense without really even too much trouble because the objects are created and initialized with value. So here I'm just printing out the phrase gross revenue for Houston is and then in inside of the print statement I'm just going to call the object and the um, method gross, gross revenue for the Houston object and then gross revenue for the Seattle object and then gross revenue for the Orlando object. When I do those guys, then it basically bounces down here and it executes this gross revenue method. So I'm calculating the revenue, I'm returning a value of the revenue, but when we, when we do that, we're using the variables associated for that particular object. So if we're calling the Houston store, then these four values are from the Houston object. We return that value as a double which gets popped up right inside of this print statement. So that's how we compact that. It looks very nice and readable. And then we print, to make $1,000 on apples, Houston must sell. And then I have a method call here, Houston store, apple revenue target, and I'm passing a value of $1,000 down there. So again, we, we've done this in the previous examples. We call that method, we pass $1,000. It calculates how many apples are needed for Houston, and it returns this number back up, which is the, this whole thing is basically returning a number, which gets dumped into the print statement. We do the same thing for Seattle, again passing $1,000. The same thing for Orlando, again passing $1,000. So these re return numbers which then get printed. And the same thing with the oranges. Uh, to make $800 on oranges, Houston must sell. And then I call the orange revenue target method uh, for the Houston object here. And I pass a value of 800. And then for Seattle, I pass again a value of 800 and so on. So these methods are returning values which are just going to get printed out. So 
you know, all of this stuff here is really stuff that we've done in, in previous lessons with those methods we've created. The point of this is to show you that you can greatly simplify the creation and initialization of an object by using a constructor. So the constructor, again, takes the name of the class, right, with no return object in front, and then you place as arguments whatever variables, member variables you're trying to initialize, and then inside of your method you just make the assignments, basically. And then when you create your object, inside of the parentheses here you just pass the, um, the numbers that you really want to initialize that particular object with, and then the code is eminently more readable. You can look at this and say, okay, I'm creating an object, these are some initial values. If you're reading the code for the first time, you may not know what these values are, but it's easy enough to go down here and see what's happening. Um, uh, there. So I encourage you to look at your code, make sure it kind of looks like what I've done here. It's probably going to look a little bit different. There's many ways to do things in programming, but at least just make sure that when you're creating your objects and you're, cr you're creating your constructor that it, it at least somewhat looks like what I've done here. Make sure it functionally is giving you the right answers and then you'll be good to go in mastering Java and constructors with methods and objects.